Micron has been launching new product after product for all budgets in the mechanical keyboard hobby, seemingly aiming to fill every possible keyboard layout. In fact, my first proper mechanical keyboard ever was a Keychron K6. Well, a few years later, here we are with the new Keychron V1, a budget enthusiast board that costs just $65 for a bare bones kit and $85 for a fully built kit with switches, stabs, and keycaps. So in the box, we get a quick start guide, a keycap puller, a USB-C cable with an USB-A adapter, a screwdriver set, extra Windows keycaps, and a switch puller. Then we have the keyboard itself. It's made of a translucent ABS plastic chassis with an exploded 75% layout. It's a tray-mounted thick steel plate with a thick layer of plate foam and a silicone dampener in the case. I also opted for the pre-lubed tactile brown switches. This board also features new screw-in stabilizers that actually weren't that bad, but were lubed up to oblivion. I mean, just look at this. The case itself is surprisingly nice with an even finish all around. The case feet can raise the typing angle from 3.5 degrees flat to 8.5 or 11 degrees at the highest angle. Along the back, you can also find a USB-C port for the keyboard and a Mac and Windows OS switcher. The keycaps are also not bad at all, featuring a unique DualShot PBT OSA profile keycap set in this black, blue, and red color scheme. If you're into it, the board does also have RGB lighting. Now here's what this keyboard sounds like stock with the factory lubed brown switches and lubed up stabs. and it's not that bad. The spacebar is a little bit rattly, but overall I think for a stock board, it's surprisingly nice sounding and well built, but we can make it better. First, let's take this thing apart. A nice hard slap should do the trick. Oh, that's not right, hang on. Gotta get rid of these switches too. One more time, there we go. Now we can flip it over and separate the top and bottom housings with the eight hex screws on the back. Now this board is tray mounted with a lot of screws. So after undoing the plenty of screws that hold the PCB plate stack to the bottom chassis, we can remove it. Once again, there are more screws holding the plate to the PCB which can be removed from the back of the PCB. Finally, what we're left with is the separated plate, foam, and PCB. Now once again, we can take a closer look at those super lubed up stabilizers and remove them by unscrewing them from the back. Okay, so with the board now broken down, let's build it back up better. First, I'm going to swap out the stock stabilizers for some Duroc V2s. I'm going to pour on holy mod these and use stabilizer pads on the PCB. Once installed, the next step is to reassemble the PCB and plate. I'm also going to replace the stock switches with some lubed and filmed mode reflex linear switches, which are a pretty solid lightweight budget linear switch. Unfortunately, I didn't quite have enough switches left over to fill this board, so I just kept the stock brown switches on the top row and page up button. Now, I do want to minimize as much case resonance as possible because I'm not a fan of the hollowness you get with a plastic chassis. While the board does already use foam and a silicone dampener, I'm going to go an extra step and tape mod the PCB using a light non-sticky tape like a masking tape, being sure to poke holes from the front to allow for the switches to pass through properly. With that part done, the entire PCB and plate can be reseated into the bottom housing. Interestingly enough, I've also found you don't need to tray mount it. There's enough of a friction fit where you can basically stack mount the board like you would in a Mode 65 or 80 board. It softens the feel just a little bit, but nowhere near what a gasket mount would feel like. So without using any screws, I dropped the entire thing into the case and closed it back up. So finally, here's a few sound tests of the final build with and without the silicone dampener and a test with some GNK keycaps as well.
So for some final thoughts. I like this board. At just $85, it really is a solid deal. Personally, I would up my budget a bit and opt for a bare bones kit going with my own stabs, switches, and keycaps like I've basically done here. But I think even as a fully built board for just $85 plus that $15 of shipping, it's a pretty good deal. Although I do think right now you might be able to find one on Amazon. If not, hopefully they restock it there soon. So that's going to be my build and quick thoughts on the Keychron V1. As always, if you like this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.